Amar Shiva. So, come on, Vlad. Uh, he didn't have to know me. Can you say that? <laughs> and uh, he is a VP of product management at another Hadoop uh, startup, MapR. Uh, and he will talk to us today about Apache Go, and he is speaking here as a representative of MapR. Where he is doing that. <coughs> Dustin Erickson, you know, he kind of got wind of the fact I was coming to Microsoft and skipped down a couple of months ahead of me. So I never really got to know him while he was there. Uh, he went to Caldera, a uh, great bunch of guys there. And uh, at Microsoft, he actually worked on product management in the very group that I am in now. Uh, but now, so I guess he's a young and proven guy, is that how it works, using Ravi's formulas that you worked on the report? I don't know. Anyway, uh, now he works on HTFS, HTS, uh, all the stuff that we are interested in here from the perspective of Cloudera. That's, uh, that's my passing of Justin, so just can recognize and represent Cloudera for this year. Alright. And last, for not least, I guess I have to say that, right? I can't say last time. Priyam. Uh, Priyam is the director of product management at Teradata, uh, at uh, the Astro Group in Teradata, and as such, he deals with the Hadoop portfolio of products. So, oh, this is something I didn't know. He was the third employee working on building out the core product. Excellent. Um, Alrighty. So, with that, let me get the ball rolling here. I must say, you know, the high people who put together this panel and managed to get an amazing group of people, um, a very, very in the mix group of companies. So I'm hoping for a very, very engaging panel. I've been told three minutes, so I'll keep it short, very, very short. Um, it's refreshing, refreshing to see uh, a big data problem in US also. I spent the last one year in uh, India and I thought India and China have a big data problem and over, nobody else. Anyways, uh, enough of big data joke. So imagine if you have to build an application. And I'm pretty sure everyone wants to come up with an app which has uh, got hundreds of millions of users on it. You have to make trade-offs and you have to make choices. The startups on one side have to make different set of trade-offs, enterprises have to make different uh, set of trade-offs. So if you look at it, you have to decide what interfaces you're going to have, starting with the application interfaces to the data access interfaces to the data management interfaces, and then you have to worry about infrastructure as to how you're going to build your application, how your uh, uh, software will be deployed on the platform, and things related to that. Now, the key goal is always the same. I want to get to the market fast, and in some cases, the goal is also to do it cheaply also. So, if you look at it from a perspective of an enterprise, I, I've been working with a lot of enterprise customers, and if you look at it from an enterprise perspective, the challenges are very different compared to a startup. A startup has a clean slate, you can pick and choose whatever technologies you want, and you can define the cost structure for building your application any way you want it. But when you're looking at uh, an enterprise, you already have an existing infrastructure in place, existing application team in place, existing uh, operations and monitoring team in place, how do you fit in these new platforms into this existing ecosystem without creating a massive disruption is basically what enterprises are looking for. And that's what I find. They are looking for investment leverage. So how can their investment be leveraged? Uh, uh, so what they are looking for, easy and transparent investment leverage. So whatever infrastructure they have, it should not become redundant uh, next day because a lot of applications rely on it. And enterprises cannot retire an application and start a new application in a few minutes. They want to extend their existing architecture. They do not want to replace, but they want to extend. Few are very close to internet scale, by which I mean Yahoo and Facebook scale, but they do have scale. So it's not like enterprises don't have scale, they do have scale. Uh, resource investment. I was uh, talking to one customer, he has about 300 people who are only familiar with SQL. That's the only thing they've done. Now, going to, with a platform like Hadoop and saying, okay, don't worry about SQL, but worry about the other interfaces, is a big headache for them. Retraining 200 people is going to take six months or a year of disruption, which you cannot afford. So our recommendation is 
there will be uh, legacy interface. And business transformation. This is about an application needs to be adopted by the business. How are the end users going to use the application? That's what they're focusing on. And finally, uh, lifespan. Startups have a different lifespan, enterprises have a different lifespan when they're building applications. Anyway, so what the net net is that enterprise finds SQL to be very expressive for complex data analytics. It can do most of the things, or almost all of the things they want to do, and uh, with the advent of adding analytics also as part of the SQL engine, it is make, uh, making their life very easy. So what we have from Pivotal, I mean of course I cannot talk about uh, all of these things and not talk about Pivotal. What we have is Hawk. This is a database which is the, the traditional green thumb database which has been ported onto Hadoop. So imagine you can do read and write directly off of HDFS and it brings you the investment, 10 years of investment which Pivotal has made uh, onto the database available to the enterprise customer. So we're talking about high query performance, we're talking about interactive query time, we're talking about an enterprise class database uh, which comes with uh, column storage, all kinds of complex joints are possible, uh, cost based query planner so that you can do things uh, pretty good, uh, security workload management and all the standard capabilities. And then on top of that you have comprehensive data management which means you have all the set of partners who work integrate with the platform and multi-level part partitioning also is available. Anyway, so we'll have a lot more di discussion on these uh, key features uh, from us as we progress in the presentation. Thank you. So I guess I'm one of the young Hadoop guys. So working at a startup in Silicon Valley and being one of the few people in the company who was actually programming in the last century, I don't get called young very often. So that was kind of refreshing to do that. But a nice, nice start to the uh, discussion. Thank you. So I want to talk a little bit about what uh, we're doing important work around SQL and, and Hadoop. Um, as Kishil said, everybody still wants SQL, right? Hadoop is great. It brings lots of new paradigms, lots of new tools, but that doesn't mean you throw away the old. You use both, and I think everybody agrees on that now. It seems SQL is a great thing. So um, there are lots of different approaches to this. How do you take SQL onto Hadoop in a way that meets the performance and features that people are used to? Right? They don't want to step way back in time to SQL of a long time ago. They want the SQL they're used to today, and they want that to work with Hadoop. And you'll hear about a number of those approaches tonight. And I want to talk a little bit about the approach Hortonworks is taking. So we started up. Um, a uh, initiative called Stinger to, to do this work. And our view on this is that Hive is already the tool to do SQL and Hadoop, and it's already very good at what it does, which is large batch SQL. And rather than start over and build yet another SQL system or um, try to adapt an existing SQL system to it, our, what we have set out to do is take Hive and make it to work not only at that big batch level, where it already is, but also work um, very well for these other use cases that people have, right? So that has two main thrusts to it. We started out by making this very brash promise that we would make uh, Hive go 100 times faster than it did in Hive Zero Ten, and that that would put it in uh, the kind of time frames that people are used to doing ad hoc queries with. You want a user to be able to sit there, type a query, and get a response back right away, right? That's not the experience you have today if you use to do. Um, but we believe we can create that experience. And second, we want to take the SQL that Hive has and expand that to have the features everybody wants, right? Hive was built in a world where it was mostly focused on large batch jobs, so that influenced what SQL features it had, mostly very basic ones, but it doesn't meet a lot of the requirements that people have when they want to get connected to their BI tools, when they want their analysts who are SQL, uh, you know, heavy duty SQL users, to use it, all those things that's missing those features those people expect and need. So we've set out to say we're going to um, add those in. And our goal at the end is that we do have one system that you as a user, you as an administrator, um, don't have to sit and think about what's the right solution, what's the right tool to use for my query, right? All you have to do is go, I know I go to Hive, I type my query, it figures out whether I need to run this like a big batch job because it's going to take three hours or I need to run this using the uh, tools I have to do very quick queries because like estimating this query is going to finish in two seconds or five seconds or whatever. Right? So that's our goal.